Hey YouTube, I'm Ali, welcome to the channel. Right, it's been a couple of weeks since I did a video and that's because I'm busy having my house renovated. Though in truth, it looks like a bomb's hit my house at the moment rather than any kind of remodeling being done. Hopefully though, that'll all be sorted out soon and I'll be able to crack on with a regular regime of videos. In the meantime, I have been busy. I've been busy reading and what else would I read but books on game design. So today's video is all about four ish books that I've come across that I truly think are amazing uh, uh, and useful in inspiring, informing, and perhaps even entertaining you uh, on your journey through game design. I'm going to run through them now. Uh, stay tuned and you can find out exactly what I thought about them. If you like this kind of content, let me know in the comments below. Perhaps give this video a thumbs up. Uh, and if you want to see more of this content, then please consider subscribing too. Right, enough chatting. Let's get on with this. Now, just before I start my reviews, I should say that I live in a very computer-based world. So all of my books are actually either uh, on Audible through um, headphones, is how I listen to them, or they're on uh, Kindle, um, uh, and I read them as a text file on my Kindle device. Well, actually, I read them on my phone when I'm traveling. Um, the point is, I'm gonna put links below to both versions, as well as hard copies and paperbacks, uh, if you want them. So there will be uh, links in the description below. Feel free to click on them. I'm going give you a heads up now I'm gonna probably put an affiliate link on there as well so you'll be helping out the channel if you did buy through uh, that link but anyway let's crack on with uh, the first book that I came across that I really really loved um, starting now so my first recommendation then is the board game designers guide the easy four-step process to create amazing games that people can't stop playing that's a title right uh, it first came out in 2017 it's by a guy called Joe Black who's a lecturer and a game designer by nature. In fact, I think he's got a game coming out on Kickstarter in July, the latest one, which is Relics of Rajiv Vahara, I think it's called. Um, check it out uh, in July, of course. And um, that's when it will be on Kickstarter. Now, uh, it's available. It's available on Kindle. It's available in traditional forms, but it's also available as an Audible download. And that is how I came across it. That's how I consumed it. Uh, the benefit is that you get to hear Joe narrate it. And you can tell his passion or you can sense his passion and his knowledge as he goes through the book. Um, so my personal uh, recommendation on how to consume this book is actually through Audible. Now, what does this book actually contain? Well, it covers all the aspects you want it to cover about game design, taking you from the original idea all the way through to a finished product. Um, the cornerstone... Well, the cornerstone of uh, his work, though, the book, really revolves around these four stages he talks about in his title. Uh, those stages are, and I've got to read this over here, inquire through playtesting, identify any problems, illuminate potential problems, and then iterate and revise your game. Now, these four stages aren't really about the creation of the game. It's more about uh, once you've game, got your game up to a particular point, a prototype in effect, what you can do to go through uh, and ensure that it's actually ready for commercial use or for uh, wider use by the public. Um, it sounds like a, a detergent then when I say wider use, uh, when it's ready for the public. That's what I mean to say there. So those four stages really hone in and guide you through uh, what you should be doing. If you have that mindset of constantly iterating and improving uh, and then testing for problems, um, understanding where those problems are coming from, uh, fixing them in effect, uh, and then uh, building upon that for the next uh, set of play testing, I think you're in a really good place. Uh, and the book Book does a really good job of guiding you down that path. Why did I like this book? Well, I liked it because uh, it was very down to earth. Um, a lot of uh, what was explained, and there were some quite involved pieces here, were explained in a way, in a language that I could understand. Uh, they were explained really with, um, and you felt this, with experience uh, uh, behind it. So you know he's he's talked, uh, he's walked the walk as well as talked the talk there. Um, the, there's some good examples and I'll just think of one off the top of my head. Um, for example, the, the, the chapter on going um, with self-publishing versus um, uh, 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 so Kickstarter versus a publisher. 
that was really well catered for. He's put in a lot more detail there. There's a, there's a breakout sort of table that explains the pros and cons, a sort of SWOT analysis, if you like. Um, so where you need to, he's put in, where he needed to, he's put in the detail. But otherwise, it's kept very light and uh, kind of entertaining as you read it. I originally came into this um, idea of reading some books on game design uh, by starting in a very sort of academic college way. I looked at uh, Susan... Someone's name will appear in a minute on the screen. Uh, her book, uh, that was a very college book. It was a very sort of, uh, the kind of book you would take to university to read about game mechanics and such like. Um, that's not really what I wanted. I wanted something that was down to earth and this is it. The other real reason I really uh, zoned in on this book was because uh, Jamie Stegmaier does the uh, Stegmaier does the, the, the forward uh, and he recommends the book. And truthfully, if anything Jamie says, uh, for me, anything that Jamie says is probably uh, bound to be good. And I, I've got to say that when I read the book, uh, I felt that that was validated. So yes, great book to start with. If you want a step-by-step -step, um, covering all the aspects from start to finish, this is a great book, I think. Now, my second book choice came from uh, Gabe Barrett, the founder of the Board Game Design Lab podcast, which is an awesome podcast. You really must listen to it. If you haven't done so, I'll put a link below so you can go and do that straight after this vid. Um, now, Gabe's also written a number of... Gabe, look at me as if I'm pals with the guy. Um, he's also written a number of other books and he's designed, I think, five or five games as well. So he knows his uh, onions. Um, the book itself is available as a paperback as well as a Kindle and of course it's available as an audible download. Once again that is how I downloaded it. This time not because I wanted to hear Gabe talk but because uh, of its contents. Now the contents is actually about a hundred plus game designers talking about all aspects uh, and problems and how they overcame them of game design. So various aspects of game design, they talk about their experiences and how they overcame particular challenges or, or, or bits of advice that they would offer out. It's all structured around a set of interview questions that Gabe's obviously put together. These are questions like, um, when did you know to walk away from a game idea or at least put it on the shelf? And what would you give, what advice would you give to a game designer who's maybe had a really bad place session, um, what failure then led to success and what did you take away from it. There's a bunch of really well structured questions that are asked over and over again and answered by each of those different designers. Now the benefit again of having it on Audible, it means that I got to hear the uh, the folk themselves, the designers themselves, tell me uh, what uh, they did to overcome their particular problems or what bit of advice they were giving. So why do I like this particular book? Well, um, my channel really tries to entertain, uh, inform, but also inspire. And that's exactly what I think this book does. It inspires you. This is a great book, especially if you get it in audible format, to have playing uh, when you're doing something else. Um, so if you're doing some housework or renovations as I've been doing, it's a great thing to have in the back of your mind, uh, to, uh, in your headphones, sorry, just playing in the background, um, because it really does inspire you. It, it helps you understand that everyone has uh, a similar set of problems that they will overcome when they're designing their game. In fact, there's something to be said about having your favorite uh, game, uh, have the designer of your favorite game explain how they overcame a problem that you really appreciate in the game. So there may be a mechanic or a particular way of doing something in a game that you really like. And hearing how someone really struggled with that and how they overcame it, that's really inspirational. So second choice, board game de uh, design advice from the best in the world. It's like I said, a relatively new book. Um, Get it on Audible if you can. If you're that kind of person who likes listening to stuff, definitely, definitely go with the Audible version if you can. And so for my third option, I went with Building Blocks of Tabletop Game Design, an encyclopedia of mechanisms. Available in August 2019, this book is created by, authored by Jeffrey Engelstein and Isaac Shalev. Um, now, both of these are prolific game designers. I think they've got between 20 and 30 games on Board Game Geeks listed uh, uh, to them. It's available uh, as a traditional um, book, i.e. Uh, paperback or hardback, or in a Kindle 
uh, digital format. Now, in this case, I went the Kindle format because it is an encyclopedia. It's a very different kind of book. Uh, this is not something you want to be uh, reading from start to finish. It's more uh, a book for dipping into. So what does this book actually contain? Well, what it's done is it's taken the game, uh, the board game, and broken it down uh, into its constituent parts. So you have things like turn order, game structure, and then you have the different elements that make up the game, things like auctions or area control or deck building. Um, for each one of those, it then further breaks down uh, that, uh, that element into a number of different mechanisms that could be used. So for example, with auctions, you might have uh, English auctions, uh, closed sealed or sealed bid auctions, uh, an open auction. And again, for each one of those, it then further breaks down the mechanism into three sections. It gives it a description describing what the mechanism is. It gives it a, uh, there's a section called discussion, which we'll come on to in just a second. And then finally, it gives a list of games that use that mechanism. Now, the discussion is one of the key elements in this book. Uh, the discussion really is about how that mechanism is used in that element. Uh, so how do you use uh, a sealed bid uh, mechanism in an auction if your game's going to have auctions. It's really quite interesting uh, uh, looking at the mind of the uh, the writers here, how they've implemented, what the kind of research they've done. Um, it's it's well put together, I think, and it's quite concise given the size uh, of the topic and the number of things they cover. Um, each page actually does pack a punch. Each uh, page that I go through has relevant information and does give you uh, a good inkling of what you should expect and how you should use that mechanism in your potential game. So why do I like it? <coughs> oh, pardon me. Look, the best way of learning about um well, the best way I think about learning about what's out there is to play lots of games. I think this has been said multiple times on this channel and probably on uh, other channels too. Um, but if you can't get to play, understanding what mechanics are available to you, uh, this book I think is invaluable in doing that. It really puts down concisely uh, a good list. It's not a complete list because that would be impossible, I think, but a really good list of the mechanics that are used in modern board games. It's a great go-to reference. So if you've got a problem, like you want to have an auction or, or you want to have a way of determining turn order, for example, well, this is a great book to go to to get some good ideas of what's been tried. It even gives you, like I said, that reference to other board games that you could then go and look up uh, and see how they've implemented. It. So my third book is really an encyclopedia, not something you want to be reading from cover to cover unless you, like me, are a little sad. Uh, but if you are looking just to understand the mechanics that you could use in your own game, this is my recommendation for number three. Now, there are some honorable mentions to be made here, uh, and the first of which is probably the next game, uh, next game, the next uh, book I'm gonna get myself involved in and read, uh, and that's called A Theory of Fun. Now, what I was looking for, the, the three books I've just described are books that I think uh, cover the overall aspect really well, they give you some inspiration, and they give you a reference book. But what they don't do, I think, think uh, really well, or, or what's missing for me at the moment, is a book that gives me a good grounding, an understanding of the psychology uh, of what makes a good game. So the understanding of why gamers like particular games and not other kinds of games. What makes it tick? What makes me tick? Uh, and I think, I think I found that book in A Theory of Fun. Now The Theory of Fun is by Ralph Costa. Now how did I come across this? Well I came across this because I think it was a TED talk that I stumbled upon years ago. Um, um, and well, a couple of years ago, uh, and that led to uh, him producing uh, that TED talk, led to him producing this book. Uh, so, that is the next book I'm going to be looking at. Um, now, if you can't wait like me until that time, well, if you pop along to his website, which I shall again link below, um, there's a section there on, I keep looking over there, sorry. Uh, there's a section there on slideshow presentations that he's done. And there's one particular slideshow called A Theory of Fun. And it's really well illustrated and it's really quite fun just watching or just flicking through the slides. It describes his book and his journey uh, uh, of how he went from the idea in the TED Talk to his book. And it covers some of the 
elements. So if you want something to, to look at and those three books aren't enough for you, have a look at the slideshow uh, that's on uh, the uh, Costa's um, um, website too. Uh, now there is one other book that I should mention. I feel I really should get around to reading it and, and I will. And that's the Kobold book of uh, game design. Now that's a book that I do want to get at. It's been around for a long, long time. Um, what I like about it, and actually the bit I got excited about, is I managed to uh, see a copy uh, that someone else had um, uh, that just talked about uh, one person's view on a particular kind of game, that is gateway games. And I read a, a little bit uh, while, um, while uh, I had the book, basically, um, and it, it described really succinctly um, some strategies for creating a gateway game. I really like the way it was portrayed that. So my second sort of book that I will be getting after I finish with these three books is probably going to be uh, the Kobold book. Again, I'll reference that and if I've got the name wrong, I'll correct myself in this video. Well, folks, that's the end of my video, and those are my three recommendations. I do think that I do think that I do think will be really useful if you're a budding game designer. Um, the stuff on Audible, honestly, I, I genuinely think that's a great way of consuming uh, information like that. Uh, being able to listen to it in the background, especially the inspirational uh, advice on the second book there. Uh, the encyclopedia, not so much. Um, Guys, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing to the uh, channel because it will uh, motivate me and help me to make more of these for you. I've got a ton of really good um, interviews coming up and I've had some amazing, amazing feedback. Uh, I want to just quickly shout out to Stephen Palmer uh, for making a recommendation uh, to Tom Vassell uh, about me and the channel. And I really am quite pleased to say that he's been in contact. So thank you very much for that. There may be something coming out of that. Uh, because of that recommendation. So thank you, Stephen. I appreciate it. Look, guys, look after yourselves. Try to stay safe and away from that damned uh, virus. Uh, until next time, take care.